Some of you may know me as the girl who's a little too obsessed with Robert Pattinson or an intense Taylor Swift and Twilight fanatic. You might have seen me walking the halls in my well-loved and critically acclaimed Robert Pattinson t-shirt. Hi, I'm Sonia. I use she, her pronouns, and I've been an Applebee since upper one. Despite my awkwardness and an intense fear of public speaking, over the years, I've had a lot of personal growth, and I'm starting to find my voice. When I was announced as this year's chapel prefect, last year's chapel prefect, they assured and Jonah gifted me a handwritten letter and told me that vulnerability is my greatest strength. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm terrified to share this part of me, but I know it's a piece of my identity that I can't deny, erase, or forget. It happened, but I'm still here. I'm happy, healthy, and breathing. That's what's most important, and I'm ready to share a chapter of my life that only some know. I'm quite nervous and frightened that I might burst into tears, so please bear with me. Five years ago, I was in one of the worst spirals of my life. This is something I never thought I would have to experience, let alone be sharing in my chapel speech. Before I came to Appleby, I was severely bullied. It happened every week and with the same people, and I truly felt alone. How does someone put into words that feeling of constantly falling through space and time, but never stopping? Things then took a turn for the worse when I started hurting myself. I was suicidal and I self-harmed. I would pinch my skin so hard it broke. I would bite the inside of my arms until they were colored with crimson. For a seemingly endless period of my life, I lived numbly and couldn't even understand the sense of feeling and being myself. I didn't know what it felt like to be me. My mental health was a vile and malicious storm, an erosion of nervous breakdowns and panic attacks. It's still difficult and frustrating for me to dissect all these years later what exactly I was thinking and feeling that kept me from finding beauty in life and living it. Admitting to myself that this wasn't something I was going to get through alone was hard. Finally telling my friends and family was even harder, and my recovery process was the hardest. During my recovery, I spent a long time battling and abandoning suicidal thoughts. I had to rewire my entire mindset and belief system that relied on destructive mental distortions. This is a page from a previous planner of mine. When I was recovering, I used colored pencils to scribble back and forth inside my planner as an immediate response to any suicidal thoughts or tendencies. I laid my soul onto a page of messy and distract black and blue colors. It was slow healing, but healing nonetheless. Recovering manifests differently for everyone, and that was a small aspect of what recovering looked like for me. My story of survival is, is an unobtrusive, unobtrusive paint splash amongst a blizzard blue canvas of those who did not. Because that's the thing about mental health. We talk about breaking down the stigma until someone's story gets too graphic or explicit and people want to look away. People look away from a canvas that later gets plastered in blood and tears. This might be something you hear again and again throughout your life, but it needs to be said again and again because you never know who's listening, who needs to hear it, and who needs a spark of vulnerability to light the fire of hope. When I told my mom that I was going to talk about what happened five years ago in my chapel speech, I saw her eyes well up and we both cried. I will admit, writing about this felt like living a guilt-ridden memory I had buried deep inside me. And that's the problem itself. I felt disgraceful and ashamed for struggling like I had, for not being able to just be happy, as people would tell me. And I will also admit, though it hurts to say, I still feel some shame now telling you all this, but my story's not shameful. It's my story, and I'm sharing it today in the hope that my journey will resonate with even one person. We never know what someone is going through, or even worse, we deliberately choose to ignore it. If you're someone in the audience that's struggling, I want to say that you are not alone. You matter, and you deserve to see your life unfold to its fullest potential. 
I know I'm not alone in this when I say that it felt like I was letting everyone down for waking up every day with no semblance of normality. But I can also say that in the end, I unearthed strength, confidence, and resilience I didn't believe I had. Resilience. If I had to encapsulate my chapel speech in one word, it would be resilience. Resilience. However, I'm not here to say that getting better is easy, because it's not. Remember when I said that a scribbled page from an old planner of mine was a small aspect of what recovering looked like for me? While drawing my emotions onto a blank page felt ambiguously poetic, I would also run my hands under scorching hot water because I couldn't relapse back into biting myself. I had become the ugliest version of myself, and it took over a year to reclaim what was beautiful about me. That was a darker aspect of what recovering looked like for me. But that's completely okay. Because your bad days don't take away from all the progress you've made, nor do they define who you are. You are not your worst days, and you are not your best days. You're just you. And there's something beautifully sacred about how human we all are. We're all humans, living through the best and the worst days, and somehow, it all fits together like a heartbroken mosaic of vulnerability, confusion, and euphoria. While we all have the magnanimous power to find our resilience, there are people who love and support you. Sadly, that's easy to forget sometimes. We all have the capability to stand alone and the bravery to stand with others. But being capable of standing by yourself doesn't mean you have to do it alone. When I had accepted that I wasn't going to survive this alone, the first person I told was my best friend. Finally telling someone changed everything. Tell someone you trust if you are struggling with your mental health. It might feel impossibly hard, but keeping your feelings locked inside will only slowly deteriorate the best parts of yourself still holding you together. When I was editing my chapel speech, I broke down crying because I kept asking myself, what do I even know about resilience? How am I supposed to talk to my peers about resilience when I'm still trying to navigate what that means? But I recognized over time how I was building the courage to be resilient without even realizing it. I became resilient and I'm still building resilience. All of you in this chapel are too. With every obstacle we face for building resilience, without even knowing it. I've now grasped that resilience is a mindset. And while not everyone can put themselves in that mindset whenever they need to, resilience remains a mindset captured in love, sadness, happiness, and rage. Like the clockwork mindset you use to fake a smile, especially when you don't mean it, we have to frame resilience for ourselves. Resilience is choosing to be kind and gifting grace to yourself by trying again. I choose to be kinder to myself because I didn't do it enough and sometimes I still don't. I'm resilient, not because I don't break, but because I can put myself back together. So what does resilience look like for me? It looks like five seconds. Five seconds out of the 1,440 minutes we have in a day. If I'm struggling, I need to take it five seconds at a time. One, two, three, four, five. If I can get through the next five seconds, I know I can get through the next 10 seconds. It's a fact of life that many of us will fall down and get lost throughout the years. But when we fall down one moment and give grace to ourselves by getting back up, we can find meaning all over again. You discover parts of yourself that define who you are today. Being resilient is not about superficial toughness. It's about being courageous enough to rediscover what makes you beautiful again. And lastly, part of crafting resilience for yourself is inner appreciation. It's hard to love yourself in this world sometimes, but there's still ways you can appreciate yourself. For every judgment you make of yourself, think of three things you would never change about who you are. For every judgment someone else makes, think of how you've added sunshine to someone else's life. And for every smile you feel you have to fake, surround yourself with those who won't ignore the sadness in your eyes. Because once again, resilience is choosing to be kind and gifting grace to yourself by trying again. We could all be a little kinder, not just to others, but to ourselves.
Today, I have shared my story and all the other untold stories that are both like mine and distinctively diverse. And what I have survived has left me with emotional and physical scars of painful remembrance. I'm never going to be the same, but that's okay. In a weird way, I'm humbled and grateful because in a not so weird way, being you is an exciting and worthwhile way to live. Because in a weird way, I wouldn't be here in front of all of you proudly saying, hi, I'm Sonia, this is my story, and I choose resilience. Now please rise with me to sing hymn number 656, She Comes Sailing on the Wind.